Hi, welcome back. My name is Professor Don Patterson. We're working on the Reverse Eye game, or Othello, implemented as a web application. In this video, one in a long sequence of videos, we're going to tackle building the game board. This is going to be an exercise mostly in building HTML and CSS, and we'll add the interactivity for a future lecture. So let's see, to get started, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to um, re-architect a few of our components. So let's go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code. And we let's review exactly how our application worked. So I'm going to restart our server running from Visual Studio Code. Come over here and reload our application. We uh, may have someone join our lobby here and over here, and immediately they're able to connect and to chat. We can invite one player and the other person can hit play. We start the game and then we go to game.html, uh, a web page that doesn't exist, and that's what we're going to build today. So let's come back to Visual Studio Code and let's start by making a copy of the lobby file, which is where we'll begin for making our game. So I'm going to take lobby.html and I'm going to copy it and I'm just going to paste it. Uh, I have to click on the folder in order to paste it, I believe. There we go. And then rename it to game.html. And if we come over and we reload our page, we should see the exact same thing as what we had before, although now it's at game.html. Now we don't want it to look like this. We want it to have the game spot, but the game setup, but this is where we're gonna start. All right, so we have game.html. Let's start at the top and come down and just sort of edit some of the things that need to be edited. So uh, for starters, we're gonna have a game board here. And so there's probably gonna be a fair amount of styling that we're going to want to have in place. So let's go ahead and move our style into an external style sheet. So for that, over here in my assets directory, I'm going to create a new folder and we'll call it CSS to hold our, uh, you know, to hold our CSS files. And let's make a new file there and we'll call it game.css. That'll hold our CSS rules. And let's take the inline styles that are present currently in our lobby and cut them and move them over to game.css. And I'm going to save it up there. Coming back to game.html, I'm going to remove those style tags and instead I'm going to link in an external style sheet. So I'll do that with the link tag and do rel equals style sheet in quotes. That's the way you indicate that what you're about to identify is a style sheet in the head. It's, you know, kind of, you give all kinds of different um, syntax for external files depending on what you're doing. And then we need to reference where in our file hierarchy we can find that. That's going to be under assets and CSS and game.css now. Close off that link, put a little close tag in there so it's proper XHTML, save it, and that looks like we should be able to link in our CSS. That'll be the place where we build out our style. Next, we're not dealing with a lobby, we're actually dealing with the game, so let's just change the title that shows up in our browser tab so that it's reverse eye. And let's come down to where we say it's the lobby and let's change it so that it doesn't say lobby, but instead it says maybe reverse eye also. Let's just see that all that worked by coming back over here. I've got an inspect browser window open off screen so I can hit empty cache and hard reload and empty cache and hard reload. And we can see that we've got uh, we've got the tab okay, looks, and we've got external style sheet appears to be working, so great. All right, so we have a couple files in place now that we can edit. And um, the next thing that we wanna tackle is to um, get our images for our, um, for our tokens to be in place. So we already have an images directory. So what we need to do is go out and get all the GIF files that we've made and place them in the images directory. So I'm gonna um, go do that. All right, I placed 11 GIF files into my images directory. So they're there and available to work with because we're gonna need them in order to build our game board. So we might as well put them all in place um, now. And I'll close the accordion for images. Um, and now let's see about changing some of our style um, over here, just to make it look a little bit differently. So let's see. Um, let's change it so that our header row is not this color, but let's make it so that our entire body is this color. Um, so I'm going to 
copy this header row, place it down there. I'm going to change this from being a class to being a tag. And we'll make the background color uh, about the same. I just want it maybe a little bit lighter. And then for our header row, um, I think we probably just want our header row uh, to be white. So let's just eliminate that for now. Oh, no. You know what? I want the header row to be the same as maybe the message pane, so it kind of looks consistent. So I'm going to add that here with a comma afterwards. Save that. And then let's see how it looks when we reload. Great. That's a little bit better for my color scheme. I like that. Um, what should we do next? All right. Let's now go into game.html. And let's edit some of the structure of our um, HTML. What I would like to do is over here, we see that messages takes up eight columns in, uh, um, in our 12 grid, eight grids in our 12 grid layout, and players currently takes up four. I'd like to change that so that our board is over here on the left with four and our eight, and our messages is on the right with four. So let's do that first. All right change our players column so that it is eight wide and our messages so that it is four wide. That is a good start. And this is not going to be players. We'll just put board here for the time being so we can see where we're going. And we'll remove our players div. Come back and see how we look. All right, something went wrong. It's, it's collapsed. Is it because we're too small? No, what did we, what happened here? So why is it collapsed? Uh, here's our row. It looks like we have one too many divs here. How's that? There we go. That's more like what I want. All right. Um, all right, let's continue going through our board and see what we need to fix here. Up here at the top, we said we had a lobby title. That's what happens when um, the board first loads the JavaScript that is the same that's in um, our lobby and in our current HTML is trying to set this to the name of the user. So let's change this ID so it's not lobby title. Let's make it game title. And that will make it so that we won't have it try and replace it with the person's name. The next thing I'd like to do is to add another row that we can have as a placeholder for where we'll have our game over message uh, shown um, at when the game is over. And for the time being, we'll just have a placeholder. So let's add another row by copying these lines from 22 to 26. And let's call, instead of ID um, game title, let's call it game over. And let's just put a text placeholder here for game over. We'll make this come and we'll make this hide and then show when the game is over. Uh, but for the time being, we'd like to keep it like that, just so we see how our layout is happening. Take a look at what that does to our layout. Puts a little game over at the top, and you can see we're getting rid of the name at the top bar. All right. I'm going to get rid of the header row class, too, because it's styling it inappropriately for when it's not the header row. All right. The next thing I would like to do is I would like to put a little bit of like a status indicator at the top, indicating what the score is and who's playing, and give players an option of uh, quitting the game if they want. So we're going to create another row here after our game over row. Uh, it will have a column. We will um, make it so that there's a left side and a right side to our column. So our left side is going to match the column underneath. So we'll use MD8, match the row underneath. And we want our text to be centered, and we want to justify all the content that's going to be in there to the center. So we want everything centered on this side in that div. And then we'll have a corresponding div as well that will be here. And that will be the rest of the eight, eight column, uh, 12, sorry, the 12 column, 12 grid column layout. So we'll make this a four. The first one will be, uh, we don't want game over. Game over was for the top. So we've got a four, an eight, sorry, an eight column, eight grid column and a four grid column. And let's go ahead and indicate here that this is where we'll display what color we are. And we'll say my color and so that we can um, adjust this later. Let's give this an ID uh, so that we have access to it in JavaScript and we'll just call it my color. And let's uh, underneath that, let's put a hard return in there. Let's put access to some of our images. So we want to put uh, a counter of what images, a counter of what our score is. 
So for our image, let's do an image and let's access some of the files that we just put into our repository under assets, images, and we'll put um, the white token on, the, on that side. And let's make it a fluid image responsive to the size of our screen, image fluid. And let's add an alt token, alt tag for screen readers. So we'll just say white score. Close out that tag and then let's copy that and let's put another one and let's make that the black token and make that the black score. Now those are just images, that's not actually the score. So let's put a place where we can put the score here. So we'll use a span, which is like a div, only it doesn't put a new line around it. And we'll call this, give this an ID so we can find it later as white sum. And we'll just put white sum there for now. So this is where we'll put the score for the white, white player. All right, and then let's do the same for the black player. And then let's just put something in here that is text in between. That's gonna just say versus. So it'd be one person versus the other person. All right. Over here, we're gonna put the quit button. We're gonna do that programmatically. So for the time being, let's just put a place where we can put the quit button. So a div whose name is quit, and we'll put quit button in there, which we'll replace later on with JavaScript. Gotta spell it right. And save it. All right, let's see what we've done now. Great, so we have our game over placeholder. We'll make that come and go as the game is over. We've got my color, which is lined up here with the board. We've got a quit button, which we'll re replace over there. We've got our white token here and our black token, white sum versus black sum. So far, so good. All right. For our, for our quit button, our quit button is kind of centered. I actually kind of want it over on the far right, so it looks kind of like it's up in the corner. So let's alter the way in which these things are justified. So let's make it text end and justify content end. That'll put it on the right side. Save that, let's take a look. There we go, that's better. All right. Now let's actually put our game board in. We have this placeholder here for our game board and the way we're gonna do our game board is just kind of with old school tables. And our tables are gonna have an ID on them that associate which position each game cell is in. So a table starts with a table tag and, oops, got a little, got a little excited there, Visual Studio. Table tag. And each table has a row in it. And so that's indicated, wow, Visual Studio is a little aggressive. Starts with TR. And then each row has a cell, which for some reason uses the TD label. And what I want to do is in this TD label, I want to give it an ID for what row and column it is. So this is going to be row zero, column zero. So I'm going to use a little underscore to indicate that so I can find it later. And just so that we have something to look at, I'm going to use the error token that we made, the error gif. So I'll say image, we'll give it a class of image fluid. Um, what else do we need to say? We need to say where the image is going to come from. And that's going to come from assets slash images, and we'll use the error GIF. And we'll give it an alt tag just because we want to be consistent. Close that out with a slash so it's good, um, good XHTML. And I'm going to bring up that TD so it's at the very end there because I'm just going to make a bunch of copies here in a second. All right, does that look good? Because we're about to make a bunch of copies. Looks okay to me. All right, so I'm gonna take that one and I'm gonna duplicate it six times below. So I have a total of seven and I'm gonna change the column numbers one at a time. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I need one more because we need eight. And that'll be one row with eight columns. I'm gonna save that and you can see what we built over here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns and one row. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that row and we're gonna duplicate it eight times. So here we go. Take that row, duplicate it once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times. Seven times is all we need because we already had one. And then I'm gonna go through and I'm going to make this 
all ones, and then the next one all twos, and the next one are all threes, and the next one all fours, next one all fives, next one all sixes, and hopefully there's one more down there. Make sure you get them all. And the last one, all sevens. Save that up. And now if we go back to our board, we've got an eight by eight board that we can work with, all filled with my error tokens. This should be a nice responsive design so that it collapses when it gets a little bit um, too small and messages drop below. We've got some responsive images. Nice. I guess it'd be kind of nice if that was centered. Um, Let's give it, let's try one. I wasn't prepared to do this, but let's see if we can center that table. Uh, the way I imagine doing that would be to say here and do text center on this column. And let's see if that does it. Actually, let me try one more option here on how we could do this. We could uh, set up the column and say that we're going to contain a table, a responsive table, which is available too. And then we'll give this a class equal to mx auto so automatic margins and the natural size of the table let's see if that does it there we go that's nice and then when we expand it great all right uh anything else we want to style here let's see it'd be nice to put some border around that table so let's let's do some let's put some border around that table. So we're going to do that by going into let's review what our tags are for our table. Tags for our table are well, we don't really have a tag for our table, do we? Let's go ahead and give our table an ID equal to game board so that we can find it. All right, and then let's go into game CSS and do some styling of that. So we've got our body, we have our header row and message pane, that's good. We've got our chat message, we've got that business. So let's go ahead and come down here and style our table. And let's go ahead and pick all the table tags whose ID is game board, which we just made. And let's say that for the, for the outer border, because we've picked the table tag, Let's have the border be equal to something like maybe four pixel solid black. And let's give it a margin of zero pixels and padding of zero pixels as well. All right, so that will be the actual board, the outside of the board. Now let's take each one of the cells that's within the board. And so that's gonna be table, game board, anything that is a TD that descends from that. And we're gonna give it a one pixel solid black border. All right, save that and come back and see what we got when we do that. There we go, that's that's a little bit cleaner for now. Again, I'm no graphic designer. All right, so that's it. We built the game board. We've got a place to put our interactivity and uh, we're ready to tackle that in our next video. Thank you for your attention.